All right, real quick. So on Sunday, I put out a video for my cool season friends, Kentucky Bluegrass, Turf Type Tall Fescue, and Perennial Ryegrass, all about getting your lawn green for the spring. I'm gonna link that up there in the eye because this video here is for my warm season friends. Wait, don't go anywhere because if you are a cool season friend, the thing that came up from last week's video was I got a ton of questions that I answered in the comments one by one, but some of the questions were repeated so many times, I decided to go ahead and write a blog post to answer the most frequently asked questions about cool season lawns in the spring. So I'm gonna link that below for you and that'll open up some more windows of understanding for you. As well as I, I hope you'll watch this video too because even though you don't have the grass types I'm gonna be talking to here, you can still pick up some tips, you can still pick up some strategies just by understanding growth habits and things like that. The other thing I do wanna say is all of my eBooks are now updated. I say all of them. I have two, I have one for warm season and one for cool season. So if you're somebody that wants a full lawn plan, step-by-step, step, what to throw down, when to throw it down, all during the year, I'll put those in the link below. Those eBooks are updated every year. And by the way, once you buy it once, it's free to you. All of the updates are sent automatically to you every season. And if you're somebody that's purchased the eBook before and you haven't seen your updated link, make sure you check your spam folder, check the email that you used to originally sign up. And if you don't see it, make sure you send us an email, shop at thelawncarenut.com, and we'll make sure we get you fixed up because once you buy the eBook one time, updates every single year are always free. So the grass types we're talking to here are St. Augustine and Centipede, Bermuda and Zoysia, and of course, my good friends with Bahia grass. So we're a little bit different than the cool season friends because they start off really quick and bomb the lawn with nitrogen. With us, it's quite a bit different. And in fact, when your lawn is still dormant early in the spring, when soil temps are approaching 50 and about to hit 55, the only thing you really need to worry about is pre-emergent. I've got a video I'll link right up there in the eye that talks about early spring pre-emergence, but basically pre-emergence stop things like crabgrass. Interestingly enough, I'm gonna to link to a video up there in the eye. When you use the granular prodiamine, it's actually a 007. It's 7% potash, which is just uses filler and as a carrier, but that 7% potash will actually give the lawn a visual response, as my friend Ron Henry from Golf Course Lawn discovered recently. But either way, that's what you wanna get down first, is that pre-emergent. Now, if you're somewhere like down here in Florida, or even, you know, parts of South Georgia, South Texas, where you're already past that 55 degree mark and your lawn is starting to green up and you're about ready to maybe do a mow or some cleanup, but the big thing is you're starting to see the grass start to get a little bit green. Well, then you should still go ahead and get your pre-emergent down, but then you also can start with fertilizing. Now, the thing about warm season turf, when we start fertilizing, we actually wanna start about the opposite of the cool season guys. If you look at our growth curve here, you see how it's really one long ramp into summer and then a long ramp into winter. And you know that because our growing season is a lot longer as well. But because it's a long ramp, you don't want to push the lawn too hard in the beginning. What you don't want to do is hammer it with nitrogen when it's kind of trying to, you know, get itself going. Because the thing about it is warm season turf, because we have, because it has so many more things to do, right? It has to not only grow roots and top growth, but push rhizomes and stolons and all of these other things because it's a self-healing grass. It needs a lot more sunlight to really get itself going. And right now the days are getting longer, but they're not as long as they'll be in the summer. And so that's why we have this long ramp. And so what you don't wanna do is try to push it too hard with nitrogen when it's not really doing that. It's kinda of slowly ramping into that time. So instead of nailing it with nitrogen, what you really wanna do is hit it with heavier potassium. Potassium does a lot of things for lawns, but the biggest thing that it does is it helps in stress recovery. And I can tell you that coming out of the winter, your warm season lawn is stressed. And the fact that it doesn't have as much sunlight as it would like is also a form of stress. So you wanna go ahead and give it some potassium, which is just gonna help it retain moisture. It's gonna help it retain optimum health all around. We kinda of say NPK, N is up, P is down, and K is all around, up, down, all around. We wanna give it that all around potassium to help the lawn be healthy. Now you want some nitrogen in there because just as I always say, nitrogen drives the bus. All the other elements ride on the bus, but nitrogen drives the bus because it stimulates growth. So we do want a little bit of nitrogen, we just don't want too much. And we want that nitrogen to be in form of slow release so that it releases slowly, it's driving the bus slow, it's kind of going slowly up that hill, right? And pulling that potassium along and any other micronutrients. So if you're looking for a good product for that, we have the 7020 Stress Blend, I actually call it the No Stress Blend. And I'll give you a link in the description below. That's the perfect fertilizer to start off your warm season turf for the season. You can see my lawn here, how green it is. This has been 
hit with the 7020. By the way, I don't know what those uh, flags are for over there. That doesn't look like very good news to me. But you can see, look at the color on this. That's because the potassium does give your lawn a nice green color. It's more of what I call a true green color. Now, I know I mentioned earlier that you're going to get some potash from your pre-emergent. That's okay. You put more down with the 7020. Those two together work really nice to give you a color pop. So you can actually do those in the same day. If you're getting here a little bit later and you're already over 55 degree soil temps and moving into 60, 65, you can apply your 007 prodiamine and you can apply your 7020 stress blend on the same day. You don't want to mix them in the hopper together. Don't do that. It'll make your application inconsistent. But you can apply them the same day, two separate applications, water it all in together. Now, if you're somewhere that's a little further north and your lawn hasn't started moving yet, hasn't started growing yet, then do your prodiamine now, 50 to 55, and then wait until soil temps cross 60, heading to 65. That's when you're going to do your first application of fertilizer. But if you're earlier late on either one, it isn't the end of the world. Okay, now let's get into some grass specific tips here because there are uh, things that are a little bit different depending on which warm season turf you have. And we'll start with what's behind me here, St. Augustine grass, and then also similar is centipede. And the reason these two are similar is because of their growth habit. These two grass types, they grow with what are called stolons, which are creeping above ground runners that move through the lawn, push up top growth, push down new roots, and that's how they take ground. Because all of the growth with these two grass types takes place above ground, you do not scalp them. We don't wanna scalp these two grasses. We wanna keep them mowed tall. However, for your first mowing out of the season here, if you wanna go one notch lower, so say you've been at four inches or even 3.5, if you wanna take your mower down one notch lower, just to kinda give it a little kick, that's okay to do. Think of that like, if you haven't been working out for a long time and you just now start a workout program, you know how you, you tend to go in real hard that first time and the next day you're really sore. But that lets you know, hmm, I did some good work and it motivates you to get back out there and continue. Think of that with the centipede or with the St. Augustine. It's okay to go one notch lower, but definitely don't scalp into it. Don't cut down in the meat of her. We don't want to cut her off at the knees. We just want to kind of give her a little, give her a little, kind of wake her up a little bit. By the way, those are just love taps and don't you dare call it crabgrass, right, Mr. Lush Lawns? Okay, next, now let's talk about two other warm season grass types. And we're gonna put these two together too because of their growth nature. That's zoysia and bermuda. And the reason we're putting those together is because they actually spread and take ground through two different growth habits. One is through the stolons, which are the above ground runners, but they also push out rhizomes, which are below ground runners. This is my zoysia here and it's looking okay. It usually looks much, much better this time of year. Let me show you what it looked like just six weeks ago. And uh, it's come back now because I've been using the 7020 here. It's had two apps in the last six weeks, but uh, it took a beating with some disease this year, but then also by our unseasonable cold weather. Don't worry, Texas friends. I got that information coming for you, but you know, part of the unseasonable cold is we had a few days into the high 30s here, or a few nights into the high 30s here, which for the most part doesn't really hurt zoysia, but you have to just think about your lawn like people. It's what they're used to. If you take a Floridian and you put him in 39 degree temperatures like me, I'm gonna be freezing to death. I'm gonna have on 17 jackets and a heating pad tucked up under my chest. You know what I'm saying? But if you take somebody that lives in Northern Wisconsin and you bring them into some 39 degree temperatures, they're probably like, man, this is like being at the spa. And your grass kind of feels the same way, right? So my grass here, my zoysia, zoysia can take cold temperatures. And we'll even talk about that in some specifics coming up here. But my particular zoysia, my Floridian zoysia, wasn't used to that. And so it took a little bit of a beating, but I got it coming back real nice right now. Either way though, because of their growth nature, the fact that they have to push roots, top growth, rhizomes, and stolons, you'll actually find that zoysia and Bermuda get started a little bit slower in the spring when you compare them to centipede and St. Augustine. It's not that much slower, but it is a little slower. That's why some of you guys, you know, in middle or northern Georgia that have Bermuda, your Bermuda probably won't even really green up until maybe mid or even later April, no matter how warm it gets, because it just takes them a little bit longer to get going. Again, they need more energy from the sun to get things moving because of all of that growth that they have to push. So don't push them too hard. And that's the thing I always say with zoysia and Bermuda, you don't want to push them too hard with nitrogen. That's what you're, you're going to think about doing, right? But you don't want to do that. And in fact, now is the time to do your scalp for your zoysia and your Bermuda, but I'm not gonna do that this year. I'm just doing what I wanna in the heat of the summer. Okay, so let's talk about scalping Bermuda and scalping zoysia. I'm here at my Bermuda project. Now, this has only had one app and it's also had its pre-emergent 
but I am not going to scalp it this season. And the main reason why is because of this right here. It is riddled with Kalinga. All of that green right there, that's not Bermuda, that's Kalinga. So I can't prove it. I'm just gonna give you a little bit of a theory here. I did scalp this last year when I started it. And what I believe is that the scalping actually allowed the Kalinga to rage in faster. Now, you have to realize that I'm in Florida and we're year round here. So there is no dormancy. Even this year, that was a pretty cold year. This Bermuda was still growing. I was still having to mow it every 12 or 14 days or so. And so because the grass doesn't ever go dormant, neither does the Kalinga. It doesn't get killed off in winter. So for me, I am not going to scout because I've already got so much weed pressure here that, that really just never went away from last year. I think I told you guys in a video early, earlier this year, this was a failure for me, this uh, grass here. But I'm learning and I am getting things moving and I am going to conquer this Bermuda this season. Also, because of the warmth that we have here in Florida, I'm too late anyway. Even if I wanted to scalp, I'm too late. Soil temperatures are well above 65, actually into the 70s right now, and so it's too late. However, if you are somebody that has Bermuda or zoysia, and your soil temperatures are still hovering down around that 50 to 55, and just before you put your pre-emergent down, you can scalp, and if you want to, you should. Let me tell you why you should scalp. So these grass types, they're beautiful. I mean, I love it, but look at it. I mean, that's pretty thick, look at that. But the thing about them is, if you let them get too tall, and I'll show you why I let this get too tall, they get what's called leggy. So let's dig in here and let her let us see if she'll show us her legs. Come on, girl, show me your legs. I'm just gonna pull some up here. Okay, there you go. See the legs, how they're brown? So you see the top is all green up here, the top growth, but down below it's all brown legs. And so what happens is this is why this grass type really should be cut low. And in fact, don't tell anybody I said this but Bermuda really should be real mode. You can rotary mow it, as I'm doing here, and my friend BYD over in Georgia, he rotary mows his Bermuda, and it is beautiful. But if you really want to do it, I, how do I say, the? I don't wanna say the right way, but if you really wanna do it, you should real mow this, and you should keep it below one inch. But again, don't tell anyone I said that, and I also realize that real mowing is not feasible for 95% of the grit eating world, so, you're going to rotary mow, but you still want a rotary mow down around that one inch if you can. If you let it get too tall, like I've done here, and I'll show you why I had to let it get too tall here. But if you let it get too tall, around two and a half or three inches, it gets leggy. And so when it gets leggy, what happens is all of the top growth is up here. You can kind of see how it kind of floats. But if you actually have to mow and cut too low into it, you start cutting into these legs. And that's when you get scalp marks is because you cut through there's i mean the, the top growth of green is only that much and all below it is brown legs and if you scalp into that you'll end up getting scalp marks where you're cutting down into the legs i hope that makes sense because you're revealing those brown legs whereas if you keep the grass cut really low well then that's not a problem see so if you did let it get too leggy if you let it get too tall and you want to try to get it back down then it's a great idea to scalp. It's just like a reset button for you. Just scalp her down, everything will be fine. It's scary for some folks, but trust me, you cannot kill Bermuda, and Zoysia is very similar. You're not gonna hurt it, just scalp it down. But in my case, I'm not doing that. Number one, because I already mentioned all the weed pressure that I have, and the weeds are gonna grow back faster. And then secondly, this is extremely uneven ground. The church has grown over the years, uh, but before they put on all the additions and everything, this used to be the septic drain field. By the way, I got a lot of, a lot of, Francis Dollar weed too. And uh, anyway, it used to be the uh, the septic drain fields or whatever, but I don't know if you can tell, but this is just all bumpy over here. It sags over there. It sags again over there. Here you can even see it. See how it's cutting into the legs here? That's just because that's a spot where when I go over it with the mower, it whacks down into the legs. Now, I'm not gonna take the time to level this because this is not really the show place lawn right here. I mean, it looks nice and we're gonna get it greened up and you're gonna see I'm gonna do really well on it this year, but it isn't worth the investment of coming out here and doing all the labor to, to uh, level it. So I do cut it tall, 
because out of necessity. And that's one of those things, right? There's a lot of rules we give you, but those rules can be broken when you're in the streets. Sometimes you have to make different decisions. You can't always go by the book, which says mow your Bermuda less than one inch, no matter what you do. No, you have to break those rules. Sometimes you have to adapt and overcome. And this is one of those cases because we're so uneven here. We're so unlevel or we're unflat or whatever you want to say, we can't mow low. We'll be scalping this thing every single time. So we have to make a command decision and mow tall here. So now this is my Zoysia project at the church. And actually I'm gonna show you something here, but before I do, it's it's also struggling again. It, it didn't do real well over the winter. It got ravaged with a large patch, despite my best efforts. I've got it cleared up now and uh, working on recovering it. This gets a ton of foot traffic now that services are back in here. I haven't put any pre-emergent down here yet. I'm behind on that. It also needs post-emergent weed control. You know, this is just part of what happens. This isn't my house. And that kind of goes back to how I tell you guys as DIYers, what your advantage is, is because you're always at your house all the time. You only have one lawn to take care of. I've got a few different ones now. And because of that, and I have a day job now, so I can't really get to this like I'd like to. So I'm a little bit behind, but it's not a big deal. I already know this is gonna come back and look great. But what I wanna show you is I'm not scalping here, but look at how low I'm actually mowing. So this is the Titan right here. Love this mower. Look at this. I am on the second to the lowest setting. And the first thing is it cuts beautifully. Now again, we got some brown in here and stuff. That's just disease scars recovering, but look at that. I would have never thought a mower that large could cut so well so low, but here you can see, and I've been mowing it pretty low, but there you can see uh, not taking that much off because I've been keeping this really low. So that kind of shows you the difference. That kind of shows you the difference in cut height. There's where it is and there's where I'm taking it to. Point being, um, I'm already mowing super low, so I don't even know that scalping would do anything to this because of how low I've kept it. And that goes back to, like I said, it's not leggy because I've been able to keep this mowed really low. Now, the reason I can do that is it doesn't grow very fast because of all the people trampling on, on it all the time. <laughs> it just keeps it from growing. It's probably super compacted too. I mean, they had like a men's night ax throwing event out here and they had a conference last week where people were doing, I don't know what they were doing, but they were out here doing things. And so it's just, it gets a lot, so. But uh, that mower right there, if you are looking for a zero turn, she's a nice one. Look at that, dropped. Woo, low. How low can you go? All right, my friends with Bahia grass, I hope the wind's gonna be okay. You can see this is Bahia right here. This is actually called matchweed. Kinda pretty, but you don't want it in your lawn. Anyway. Bahia grass doesn't need a ton of care, you guys. It uh, can be thick though, and the way that you get it thick is by mowing often. That's the quickest way to get it thick. Mow it every couple, two or three days. But for the most part, it doesn't need a lot of care. You can see how green this is already. This is never fertilized. But you wanna give it kind of similar to centipede, lots of potassium, a little bit of nitrogen, and then lots of micronutrients. So 7020, perfect for the Bahia. You don't wanna cut this low at all. Keep it tall all year round just as things start to get warmer, you wanna start mowing. So most of you guys that have this are gonna be in Florida, maybe some coastal Louisiana areas. You wanna start mowing this often, as often as you can. That's the best way to thicken it up. Keep the potash high and the micronutrients in. All right, real quick, wanted to stop here in the warehouse. You just wanted to be in the video, didn't you? That's the whippiest horn I've ever heard. <laughs> That's what she said. It's a happy horn. All right, I wanted to stop here real quick though to tell you guys, so no matter what your grass type is though, you definitely wanna be starting with the biostimulants now. We have the biostimulant pack, which is below, that's in all of my programs, that's the four pack. That is by far the least expensive way to get your biostimulants from us. However, a lot of you would ask for single gallons. We do have those now available. So if you wanna get a single gallon, I'll link those below if, you, if you're out of one thing. Now it's just the biostimulants, we have the RGS, the micro green, the Humic 12 and the Air 8. But those are available. And again, a lot of you guys had asked about that. So I wanted to go ahead and let you know that those are now available. All right, y'all, so there you go. I hope these tips have been helpful for your warm season turf. Now, my friends in Texas, I realize you're under a little bit different situation. I'm actually making some content for you that's gonna come out in a couple days. Just to, I gotta kinda go through that a little bit differently, but it'll still be all warm season content, but it'll be for those of you recovering 
from that freeze and, and that just nasty cold blast that you guys have. So that will be coming up in a couple, two or three days. Also, I'm putting a blog post in the description below because a lot of times I get questions and things like that or people just want to read the information that I've presented here in the video. I'm going to put that in a blog post below if you're somebody that wants to get more information there. And also, if you're cool season and you watched all the way through, thank you. Don't forget I got a blog post for you down below that also gives more information. So hope you guys have a great week and I'll see you in the lawn.